Hello, my name is Preeti Joseph and I am the Auditor Nationals Tutor with Phoenix Financial Training. This is just a few words or just last minute few tips before you go into your AA exam. Okay, first and foremost thing we're going to be looking at is your exam structure. The first thing you need to know is the AA paper is a unique paper at a fundamental levels, which has got only two sections. You've got section A and you've got section B. Section A has got uh, three scenarios. Each of the scenarios has got five questions and each of the question is worth two marks. In terms of the proportion of how the five questions would be laid out is where you have three questions, which is going to be based from the given scenario. And then you have two questions that is going to be purely knowledge based questions. So that's not linked to the given scenario. Whereas when you have section B of your paper, you've got three questions. Uh, the first one is a 30 mark question. There's one 30 mark question and then you have two 20 mark questions. Now, in terms of your exam, you have your structure, which is going to be a three hour exam and it is a computer based exam. Keep in mind, there is a lot of written in our paper, which is a double A paper. I would say like 98 percent of your paper is writing, like a lot of typing, typing, typing. And there's only two person, which is numerical, which will have a bit of materiality calculation, maybe some analytical reviews like ratios that you need to calculate. And that is all the calculations that you will see from an exam point of view. But remaining everything is a lot of discursive application writing bits and elements that you need to put in so focusing on section b of a paper because section a it can you can test on anything from the whole syllabus can be tested view from a section a point of view but when we talk about section b these are the possible areas that can come for you in the exam the first one is where you have your audit risk question so remember you have audit risk along with the auditor's response when we talk about audit risk and auditor's response, you need to make sure you talk about the accounting standards. You talk about the reasons why they have not followed those accounting standards. That is going to be your audit risk question. Then the next probable area is going to be controls. Under that, you have the first three, which is definitely guaranteed sure shot is going to come for you in the exam, where they'll ask you to identify and explain the deficiencies. Then you need to recommend a control. And for each control, you need to then tell me what test of control that you're going to be performing. The other two questions are if and if it may come, it may not come, but you need to be prepared for the exam where they ask you about strengths and they will talk about the objectives of a particular system. Strengths meaning controls are already there. So you have to identify the strengths that are there in the given scenario and then tell me the reasons as to why is it a strength? What risk is it being reduced over there? And then tell me about the objectives, which are the reasons why you put a control in place. Okay. Along with that, then they can ask you for sure is substantive procedures. There are different kinds of substantive procedures. If it does get tested for you as part of the 30 or one of the 20 markers, it will be like a knowledge based substantive procedures where they will just say describe the substantive procedure on um, you know, receivable, describe the substantive procedures on the, you know, redundancy provision. So it can just be just random, you know, account balances or class of transaction that they will ask you on worth around five marks, three marks in the exam. But when it comes to the second 20 mark question, that is scenario based application based uh, substantive procedures. So they will give you a scenario, small, small scenarios. And then based on that, you will have to then create the substantive procedures over there, which will be around 15 marks broken down into small, 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 small areas. Finally, then you'll have the impact on the order. Tell me what kind of an opinion are you going to be forming based on the issues that have remained unresolved? OK, so these are guaranteed. It's going to come in the exam. So you have got trolls question. You have your audit risk, substantive impact on the audit report. The other two elements, which is talking about ethical issues and corporate governance, it may come. It may not come. It really depends. But make sure you do practice at least one or two questions from that area so that you're comfortable with the approach in which how you need to answer your ethical issues as well as your corporate governance related issues. Yeah, so. Keep in mind, these are the key areas that will come in the exam. And along with that, also keep in mind, there are elements of knowledge in each and every question. So in question number 30, as well as the question number of 2020 markers, each of them will definitely have an element of knowledge. Knowledge meaning something from the ISA, so something from the International Standards of Auditing. They can ask you any question. So you should be able to be ready to answer those questions. So it can be like, what is an audit risk? What are the components of the audit risk? What do you mean by materiality? And 
what do you mean by performance materiality or you know what are the matters to be considered before accepting an engagement so any knowledge based question they can ask you which is again a sure shot which will come in the exam but i can't tell you guys what is going to come for you in the exam so you just need to be prepared for it so if you have noticed the key areas that would be tested is obviously audit risk you have controls you have substantive so make sure you're comfortable keep practicing these questions up until the day of the exam Okay, guys. So thank you very, very much for watching this video on the exam ticks. Uh, all the very, very best for your exam. Keep calm. Make sure you stay focused. It, even though if there are some hiccups that may come, because at the end of the day, it's a computer-based exam. We don't know what hiccups may come up, but whatever it is, guys, stay calm in the day of the exam. Uh, focus on the things that you know. Always keep sure that your eyes is on the clock. Make sure you're keeping uh, to the time. That means section A of the paper versus section B. Especially for AA paper, guys, please make sure you attempt section B of the paper first. Allocate easily two hours to do your section B of your paper. And then the last one now you can come back and do section A. Do not do it the other way around, guys, because you need to write quite a bit in section B of the paper. So please make sure you do section A, which later says your time starts now. Navigate yourself to section B of the paper and make sure you attempt that first. The 30 markers should take you 45 minutes and the 20 markers each should take you 30, 30 minutes each. Yeah, so allocate your time maximum. That's saying the upper limit is two hours. Do not take more than that. Once the two hours is up, move on to section A. Choose the options based on the answers that you know. And then if time permits, you can then come back and do section B of the paper. Okay, guys, so once again, all the very, very best for your exam and take care.